Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Romet Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. We're glad to welcome you to another edition of the program. We do hope that you'll have a wonderful time and that you have arrived where you need to be at this moment because traffic is thinning and everything is getting better, mm -hmm. I think. Well, uh, today we're going to be looking at very important issues, as always. And the first one is NNPCL pledges to produce 2 million barrels of crude oil daily. That's mm -hmm. our first hot topic for the day. Well, and our second hot topic is Tinubu meets with Fubara Odili, others in Afso Rock. So that's talking about um, the saga in Port Harcourt right mm -hmm. now. The, the, the political war, mm -hmm. uh, it seems to have some... I was going to say crisis, uh, the, but then I was like, <laughs> let me say the saga. <laughs> okay, it's, it, it's going to be a very interesting discussion uh, later on. Uh, we do hope that you're going to stay put wherever you are and get to watch that and hear what is really happening in the okay. river state. Will the resolutions be taken or not? That's a question that we're going to ask. Yes, is. You, you, you come out with a communique, you come out with decisions, you have decided that X, Y, Z is going to be done and all that. But there are so many questions that are begging for answers. So when it gets to that time, we do hope that the person who is going to be talking with us, who is eventually a former uh, CPS to the deputy governor of uh, River State, will have the insights to whatever the story is. Yes, anyways, it's the 19th of December, and as usual, we're counting down to Christmas. So we hope you're gearing up, doing all of your shopping, um, making sure you're spreading love in this season, sharing kindness, and, you know, just being merry because that's what Christmas is all about. Yeah, just uh, prepare the hampers for us because we will be in the studio <laughs> <laughs> trying to uh, talk with you and present this program as well. So Christmas to us will not be the same as yours mm -hmm. that you'll be having with family and friends. But we're glad that you are part of our own family, mm -hmm. and we hope that we are part of yours as well. So yeah. think of the hampers you are going to send to mm -hmm. us in the studio. Yeah, so <laughs> always glad to serve you here yeah. on The Breakfast. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to move over to our top trending stories this morning. And this one says, the Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja has affirmed the election of Adamawa State Governor Amadou Umaru Fintiri. The panel of three judges on Monday dismissed the appeal filed by Aisha to Dahiro Ahmed Benani and affirmed the decision of the Governorship Election Petition Tribunal. Delivering the judgment, the presiding judge, Justice Tunde Oyebamiji Awotori, awarded 500,000 naira in favor of each of the three respondents. Binani, a candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC, earlier challenged the election of Governor Fintiri, People's Democratic Party, at the Election Petitions Tribunal, alleging several irregularities and substantial non compliance with the Electoral Act. She hinged her case on the accreditation, improper accreditation, and overvoting, non accreditation actually, um, overvoting, violence, and snatching of election materials, among other irregularities. She argued that Fintory's election could not stand because there were multiple declarations of winners and returns made, according to her. She was earlier declared the winner by the resident electoral commissioner, um, Hudu Yunusa Ari. As such, she maintained the election had two different declarations of a winner. So that is coming from Adamawa State yeah, here. When we were in secondary school, in GSS2, um, someone came up with a word which is, has no relationship with the dictionary at all. He will ask you, is who gave you the odomodo? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, who gave you the guts mm -hmm. to do what you're doing mm. right now? And then they were afraid of us, you know, the mm. way 365 days is not an easy thing, <laughs> kind of thing. But, you know, on a serious note now, how could Binani even go to court? to say there were multiple uh, declarations of, of winner. the winners. Because even the resident electoral commissioner still has a case till now because mm. of what he did. Mm. It was very illegal. It was, it, was, it was something that he needed to be arrested for, for and prosecuted. And they went after him. I don't know how that case has reached now, mm. but he still has that case. So there was no official declaration at all. So how is it that she even still went to court? Saying that even, she was declared even winner. she was a suspect. How could <laughs> that kind of a thing have happened? So, 
in other claims maybe he could, she could also have been answering in the courts why did you do this it's possible that he bribed the person mm -hmm. and all that so the, the, and now he went she went to court and said that there were multiple declarations i don't know and irregularities i mean i saw this um, story developing during the election period and i'm just like okay what can be more irregular than All right. being announced when you're not even supposed oh, to? The election has not finished. Finished, and, and you're being announced you're as being winner, announced. and now you're still claiming that you're supposed to be the legitimate winner. Well, definitions in Nigeria are, are just something else. We, we don't know how some words that we thought we knew the definitions in Nigeria, uh, the definitions change. But, you know, that just tells you, for at least for me, I think, it shows you how many psychophants go around people mm. because they must be urging her on. You, you mm -hmm. were the winner. You were yes, the definitely. winner. Go to court, you know, and he, she will think that these people have her best interest mm -hmm. at heart. They have my back. I have, yeah. I have people, you know, governizing this whole thing. At the end of the day, she is the one who will still spend the money. Yes, and because then, when you go to court, they're legal fees. And yeah. at the end of the day, there's every possibility that you're still not going to be declared the winner. There are so many other things that were awarded against her. I think the 500,000 or so mm -hmm. uh, awarded against her, and then she still lost, and so many other things. And, well, Sometimes I wonder, um, why, do, why do people go into all of these legal battles knowing fully well that you might not win? Is it that maybe there is a, there's a pat on the back or you earn stripes? To say, oh yes, I've done this. You know, um, I I was a candidate for governorship or presidency, and then even though I did not win, but it's already in my CV. I, I want to understand it. Like, is there like a portfolio thing that makes you feel, <laughs> you know, you need that in your portfolio, and then you go ahead to all of these legal battles? Sometimes it's just to save face. Uh, you ha you want to blame someone else that it is the court that awarded it to the next person, you won't accept the fact that you lost at the mm -hmm. polls, which you did. So uh, if we get to that point where we begin to see that losing it's is not, not really, you're not a failure yeah. just because you lost at the polls, then we will begin to understand that there's no, absolutely no reason to be going to court. But the second reason, like I said earlier, is the people around you. Mm. They will tell you, you have a very good case, and the lawyers are not helping anyway. Obviously, they want to make their case. money. You have a very good case, and then go. Go and, you know, go to the Court of Appeal, go to the Supreme Court, wherever uh, it leads you. Go there, you just might have the judgment that you want. People should be able to just own up to yeah. uh, whatever happens to them. I mean, um, we saw our, one of our former presidents, um, Good Luck Jonathan, mm. he considered defeat. So I think that's the way to go for true democracy. If people are not going to vote for you at this time, it's okay to, to say, okay, you know what? I understand that you don't need me at this time. However, I might come at another time. We have Abraham Lincoln who, you know, tried, tried so, many, so times. many times. So that can also happen. Don't say because you failed one time, that means you're a failure. That means you won't come back. And then even if you fail right now, just accept it and know that, okay, you want to come back stronger and better. Mm -hmm. Jonathan even had a case that he could have, he could have argued out mm -hmm. in court and all that, but he placed the interest of the nation above every other thing, and he said, "Okay, you know what? Let me concede." Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. But some people don't even have a case. Why? Is, I, I feel like in this election cycle that we've had, is court cases flying up, down, yeah. left, right, <laughs> everywhere. So this one, this one. Who gave her the order model? <laughs> okay. And okay. Uh, the next uh, trending topic is that NAFDAQ shuts uh, 240 shops over fake drugs, beverages in Abba. So no fewer than 240 shops in Cemetery Road Market, Abba, in Abia State, have been shut down over fake and counterfeit drugs by the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC. Their drugs and other products confiscated were worth more than 700 million naira, according to the Director General of NAVDAC, Professor Moji Adeyeye. Uh, they said the raid was carried out within the first two weeks of December 2023 and that many such raids had been going on in the country. Oh, well, Cemetery Road, Abba, mm -hmm. a notorious spot, and then 240 uh, people or illegal manufacturers yeah. and all that. Um, much as I condemn the fact that they were doing things that were illegal, especially like, you know, changing the dates, expiry mm -hmm. dates into mm -hmm. something else and all that. It gives me worry 
maybe I, I don't think straight like, like the people <laughs> in authority, but it gives me worry. People are there adulterating or producing fake Hennessy, fake four cousins, fake uh, uh, schnapps, fake like whatever. Like whiskey. Yes. Yeah. And then they're putting these things out in the market. And the people who do not know, maybe from the labeling that they could identify these things, mm. do not know the difference. Yeah. You know where I'm going. Which means these people possibly have the capacity to produce their own. Those, yes. But the Nigerian factor will not give them the market because you produce shoe in a bar, you write made in Italy. People are buying it like Italy made, mm -hmm. but it's done in a bar. And if you put made in a bar, they will not buy, buy it. So that is on the one hand, the Nigerian factor. The second thing is some of these people may be illegal before, because the process of having approval to operate what mm. they do is so cumbersome. Tedious. That it's tedious. It, like, was it on a program? Yes, a few days ago when mm. somebody was saying the process of getting goods out of Nigeria, let's yes. say yams, yes. you know, will take like 75 days, mm -hmm. which is like three months. Mm -hmm. But in Ghana, nearby, even Benin, Benin it takes you five days. So the process might be so tedious that you don't want to go through that mm. because you might spend all the capital that you want to invest in your business and all that. So some of these things, if we can address the root causes, mm. we shouldn't, we wouldn't get to where we this, are. Yes, yes, it's, it's bad. It's terrible that they will change expiry dates and all that. But there are some that are doing the same things in such a way that you can't tell the difference, except mm. you're an expert. You know how the labeling is done. You, mm. you have some serial numbers or something and all that. But you can't tell the difference from the taste. So mm. why can't we domesticate this? Taste? I know. So... Here is my understanding about this thing. I, on one hand, you can make a case for them saying, um, produce your stuff. And the only reason why you're still putting made in Italy or using these big brands is because you feel like, okay, the Nigerian factor. But have you tried? Because at the end of the day, if it's illegal, it's illegal, right? And if you're lying, you're lying, your integrity. I'm condemning that. that. It is state. illegal. It's illegal. But, you know, yeah. when some things are illegal, you too, you have to... You have I to definitely think. not that yes. needs to think about this. And okay, why yeah. are people doing this? Right? Because but when you're you talking know. about um, uh, putting uh, Italy and all that, remember mm. what, you, okay, you asked the question, have you tried? We have car manufacturers in Nigeria, and our legislators that make the laws will tell you that, yeah, we need to buy a it car depends. from where yeah. uh, there is a name. They have a name already. Mm. What does that, that they really trust mean? those ones better because, you know, they've been in an industry for a while. I know it's it's ridiculous. So who's going to give you the backing if they? And then how do we even get revenue, right? We're saying that we want to grow our economy. How do we even do that if we're not going to um, patronize the the products that we have here? We always want to import everything. So guess what? We always need forex. Is the is the process to getting things done that is so cumbersome that? A lot of people cut corners. I know, mm. like you said, what is illegal is yeah. illegal. And for me, one, one thing I cannot condone is um, when you know that a drug, especially something that the person is going yeah. to ingest. Yes. I can understand if it's like a fashion item, if mm. it's something that, you know, is external. But when someone is going to actually ingest this thing and a their drug. health is Not at stake. Drink, I know of someone, drug, yeah. a very popular uh, musician that died of, I think he was sick. He had malaria or something like that. And then he bought a drug that was fake. And he died. So guess what? You're putting people's lives at risk. And for that, I think you should go to jail. There's nothing anyone is going to tell yeah. me. I think you should go I to agree. jail. Because it is, no, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. You never go there. If you're saying, okay, we're producing um, snake skin bags, come on, we have uh, alligators, we have snakes, we have, you know, all of these things. We can produce this stuff. If you're producing that and you say you want to put it made in Italy, I don't have a problem, but still just know that your integrity is at stake. It illegal. is illegal. It's illegal. Yes. But mm. if you get, guess what? These companies or illegal people have, have existed for a very long time. And NAVDAC only did the rate now. Which means there are people in authority that they are settling. Of course. No, no, no. no that, that, that's, that's definite so, now. That's definite. So, so many things come to play. In when fact, um, so there, there's a shop that I, I um, buy all of my groceries from in Lagos Island. So I love to buy in bulk because, I mean, that's the only way I can yeah. economize. And a lot of shops in Lagos Island, guess what? 
they have contrabands. There are lots of things we're not supposed to be importing into the country. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Navdak would go there, um, raid their, their shops, close it down maybe for like two, three days. They settle with like three million. Their shop is open again. So there are people in these authorities mm -hmm. that, you know, they just settle, give them some money and, you know, they sweep it under the carpet. Yeah, well, uh, still, um, <laughs> while we are, we are playing the devil's advocate for people to get it a, a little bit easy, like you go to the south side, you have Bo Fire, the mm. illegal refineries. We don't have uh, fuel in this country. There are people who are refining it, and nobody has complained that this fuel is not good enough, which means we have the technological know-how. Yeah. But why are people still cutting corners? Um, some of them will say it's because... Uh, to get a license to do that is very, very difficult and all mm. that. But while we're playing the devil's advocate and, and asking the government to do better, what is illegal, like it's, Ruma yeah. said, is illegal. So go through all the... A, a business should not exist on its own. It's, it's easier when you have a partnership. So if you think your funds cannot take you mm -hmm. through the process, partner with someone else. Yeah. Two, three, four, five. That's why people buy shares. That's why people... Two good heads. Yes. Are better. I, I was so, going to say two heads are better than one, but two good <laughs> heads. The heads have to be good. Two good heads are better than one. Okay. Okay, let's move over to the next top trending story. And we have Shoinka condemns EFCC's unjust detention of Agunloe demands immediate release. Nobel laureate Professor Wally Shoinka has criticized the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, over the unjust detention of a former Minister of Power, Dr. Olu Agunloye, noting that it was in total contempt of sense and justice. Shoinka, in a release on Monday, said that the arrest of Agunloye over the Mambila Power Project by, by the anti Grafts Commission was questionable adding that it was not the first time he would have to score the high-handed and illegal conduct of the EFCC. The elder statesman hence asked the EFCC to release all its prisoners or, in the alternative, equally arrest and detain all those involved in this mammoth scam of the Mambilia Power Project. Shrinker wrote, Concerning governance, there is never any moment too early nor demand too drastic in calling for the overhaul of security agencies where their activities intrude on the fundamental rights of the citizens. The practice of the citizen detention at the whim of either religious blackmail or secular arrogation demands curtailment at source, most especially when exercised in, de in the defiance of the law and the pronouncement of its agencies. Anything less goes to remind us that anarchy remains a choice for citizens' recourse with unpredictable consequences. Schoenka also focused his statement on the basis of individual fundamental human rights of Mr. Agunloye declaring the merits or demerits of the charges raised against him over a 16-year-old project that bears the name Mambila as the business of the courts of law. He further raised the question of how the detention of any former public servant on the circumstances such as this serve public interest by the pursuit of justice through such arbitrary ex exercise of power. I mean, I agree with showing her. Uh, um, let's not arrest one person and leave another one. Yeah. Arrest well, everybody. MFLA is in jail Investigate now. everybody. The president, the president is, is out. Mm. MFLA is the one uh, facing the music for mm. policies he made in his capacity as the CBN governor. Uh, we shouldn't uh, make him uh, get arrested anyway. Uh, but um, if he did steal at that time, well, of good. Course it but there are the policies that he made that had the nod of the president at that time. Mm -hmm. So why will he be the fall guy? Every, every, everything now in Nigeria, they just look for a fall guy, yeah. and then you are the one who gets arrested. Maybe they settle you in one way or the other, mm. and then every other person works free. We talk about the fuel subsidy scam. Till now, we've not seen anybody that mm -hmm. has been arrested or indicted even for this scam. And then there's, there's, there's a lot, there are a lot of people who are involved in this. Nobody's mm. talking about yeah. it because you talk about one person, it stains another and all mm. that. So maybe they're looking for a to, way to cover to, up. Yeah. To, then when the fall guy comes, someone they can pinpoint and say, okay, you are the one who caused this. He goes mm -hmm. to jail for everybody else. Yeah. And then, I mean, there's, there's even been rumors of people funding Boko Haram for the longest time. Yes. And they've been telling us they have the list. Yes. But you, nobody, you're not hearing anything. You're not seeing anything. You're not, there's nobody that's been indicted. There's nobody that's been prosecuted. There's no investigation even that we know of. 
And I, I think we need to get to a place of, when you say something is true and pure, our democracy needs to be true and pure, our system of government needs to be true and pure. You can't um, try to cut corners in some ways. You can't try to say, oh, I have connection with this person, so therefore I would let this person off the hook um, and make sure that other people serve their time. Everyone, as long as you do wrong, you should, should, you you should answer time. for it. Yes. There are consequences to these things, and you should face the Trump music. Trump is answering for whatever he did. Even as um, right now, and Biden is president. answering, even as the sitting president, mm -hmm. for the things. In fact, they're, they're thinking of impeaching him and all that. And then in Nigeria, you just walk scot-free. People, I think it's misplacement of priorities. For instance, in Lagos here, have you ever heard them talking about the fact that Lagos is sinking? Uh, there have been reports upon reports year after year that in the next maybe 50 years, Lagos might sink. Yeah, and really then they're not saying this. Because if you begin to say things like this, people begin to understand that, okay, there are some things that they don't need to do. Mm. You tell them don't throw uh, waste into the gutters and all that. They don't even know the consequences. Um, okay, if it floods, there's going to be dry season one day and all that. But Lagos is the second ranked city uh, marked for sinking by the early 21 oh, oh. Mm. so if that is the case and they say it is sinking by 0 0.3 uh, inches every year nobody's talking about it we're talking about uh, things that are not even important Eco atlantic and buying a condo there yeah. so right now we are we're reclaiming land in lagos everywhere you go to where there's some kind of water we'll pour sand on it mm. and then we we'll reclaim the land Water you know one thing about water? <laughs> I was about to water say that. finds its level, no matter how you try to do it, except you channel it well. And I'm not sure We're there's any channeling mm. here in Lagos. It's just to reclaim, reclaim. You are reclaiming from who? Hmm. Water will come back on. That's scary. And even if even that 50 years may be too long for Lagos to sink. We should start talking about this, especially after we just concluded the COP28. COP28 right. We should be talking about these things. So maybe we'll get an expert one day that will yeah. tell us what really yeah, are the consequences and all definitely. that. All right, we'll go on a quick break. Um, well, Up the Press is up next, where we'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning. But first, let's look at the weather. Stay with us.